Today we are going to discuss student loans in the FAFSA application process. What is a FAFSA? FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It qualifies you for federal grants, loans, or work-study programs. The money loaned through student aid is dispersed directly to your school. With the grants or loans, your school will apply that money towards your tuition, fees, and room and board if you happen to live on campus. To start your application process, you can go to fafsa.ed.gov or Google FAFSA to find their website. You will want to create an account, which they call a FAFSA ID, before you start filling out your application to avoid delays in the process. Your FAFSA ID will also allow you to electronically sign forms. Make sure you submit your application before the deadline for your selected term to start school, whether that is fall or spring. Your application will not be accepted past the deadline. You can either print out an application to file or fill one out online. I would suggest filling one out online as there are a lot of helpful tools on their website if you have trouble understanding how to answer a specific question. Depending on your citizenship status, along with being a dependent or independent individual, you will need different things. Here is a list of what you will need depending on your status. Most people going into college straight out of high school are going to fall into the first category for U.S. citizen dependent. And most non-traditional students are going to fall into the second category, which is U.S. citizen independent. So each category here will list the documents that you will need to complete your FAFSA application. Now we are going to discuss the sections and questions on a FAFSA application. If you would like to look at the questions beforehand, you can always download the paper application for a FAFSA on their website. You can also Google FAFSA paper application and try to find the PDF in the search results. Let me show you real quick. Go here, FAFSA paper application. You'll see the PDF right here, so you'll just click on the one corresponding with the year that you would like to start school. And it should download on your computer, and then you can open up here. And these are gonna be all the questions that are the same exact ones online. The first section is going to cover student eligibility. You will have to answer questions based on your citizenship status, marital status, state of legal residence, past drug convictions, and your parents' level of education. If your parents don't have college degrees, you may be eligible for state grants specifically for students who are the first in their family to attend college. You will also be asked to enter in the name of your high school what year in college you'll be entering, and if you would like to opt into a federal work study. You can always consider saying yes to opt into a work study if you aren't sure, because you can always decline later on if you change your mind. You will also be asked if you have registered with Selective Service, which is the military draft. Nearly all men ages 18 to 26, including undocumented immigrants and people with disabilities, are required by law to register. And if you aren't registered, you will be denied federal financial aid. If you don't object to this, you can register via the FAFSA form by checking the box. The second section is going to cover school selection. This is where you will enter the names of the colleges you plan to apply. You can add as many as 10, but don't worry if you haven't finalized your list yet. If you want to add another college or delete one from your list, you can always make changes later. For each school that you include, you will be asked if you plan to live on campus, off campus, or with your parents. And this is because you won't need funds for room and board if you are living at home or commuting. The third section is going to cover dependency determination. Colleges want to know if your parents support you 
or if you are an independent adult. The vast majority of high school students are considered dependent for college financial aid, FAFSA purposes. However, you're generally considered an independent student if you are 24 years old of the award year, a graduate or a professional student during the award year, and the award year is the year that you're going to be in school for college, if you are married or separated, if you are a parent or you have other dependents who currently receive more than half of their support from you, if you are a ward of the court, or if you are a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces. In the case where you are an independent student, you will not have to fill out the information about your parent or guardian's demographics or finances. Otherwise, you will have to fill out that section. If your family situation is complex, for example, you're a minor but you don't live with your parents or you don't have access to their financial information, you can find some guidance on the FAFSA website. You can also find help from guidance in financial aid counselors as well. The fourth section is going to cover parent demographics. Once again, you can skip over the section if you are an independent student slash citizen. If you are a dependent student, aid decisions will consider your parents' age because older parents may need to conserve more for retirement, how many children your parents support, and most importantly, if they will have additional children in college that year. Each of these elements affects the calculation for your expected family contribution, so answer all the questions carefully. If you are a dependent student and you live with your parents, however, they are not going to be helping with your college education, there is a specific form that you can apply with your FAFSA application. Older parents are expected to contribute less since they are closer to retirement. Parental contribution is divided by the number of students in college. If the parents are divorced or separated, include only the financial data of the parent with whom you live with for the greater part of the year. If that parent has remarried, the student will have to include the step parent's income and asset data as well. Some colleges request information on the other natural parent and may expect a contribution from that parent as well. You will have to answer questions about your parent's marital status, their social security numbers, their age, the state in which they live, how many people live in their household, if they are receiving government assistance such as Medicare or WIC, and their tax return information. The fifth section is going to cover your financial information. You will need to fill in your parents' adjusted gross income from their 1040 forms or whichever form that they filed. If you are independent, then you will just have to supplement for your tax information. The online application does have a tool that allows you to transfer your tax information directly into your application by linking to the IRS website. And this is very helpful so you don't have to type in everything from your tax return. You will also be asked about assets, both your parents and yours, depending on your status. This will include savings accounts, investments, and real estate. Real estate, if you have to supply that information, that does not include your current residence. That includes rental properties, things like that. If you or your parents have qualified retirement accounts, such as IRAs, a 401k, a 403b, or pension plans, those are not counted as assets. The final section is where you are going to review your information, sign your application, and submit it. If your parents have another student in college, their demographic and financial information can be transferred to the next application so that they don't have to rewrite everything. So what happens next? 
three days after you submit your application, Federal Student Aid sends your student aid report, which is called a SAR, containing all of the data you submitted in your application, excluding any tax information provided by the IRS. Carefully check it for any mistakes. You can fix any mistakes you find by logging back into your application and saving your changes. Your SAR might say that you're selected for verification, which federal student aid requires randomly. If you're selected, your school will reach out to you for documentation to back up your application. It'll typically give you a deadline to submit your documents before you lose eligibility for financial aid. After your school receives your information, it sends you a financial aid award letter that explains how much funding you're eligible to receive for that period. When you receive your award letter depends on when you apply and how your school's financial aid office works. Typically, you'll get it anywhere between the winter before your courses begin to just before the start of classes. Sometimes it can be a little after if you're applying for the spring semester as a first time student. Select which type of aid you want to accept, starting with the financing options that you don't have to pay off, such as grants, scholarships, and work study. When it comes to accepting loans, look at federal student loans before state or local government loans. Consider saving private student loans for when you've run out of federal funding. If you think you should have been offered more aid, you can also write a financial aid appeal letter to ask the school to reconsider your package. This website right here gives very good details on how to file an appeal letter, also how to write it as well. So we can click on the link here and let me show you what it looks like. So this discusses what a financial aid appeal letter is, how to write it, starting with emailing the financial aid office of the college that you are wanting to attend, calculating how much more aid you will need then you'll also have to formulate your argument and back up your case with documentation. And you'll also have to write a letter and this goes through all the steps with it. So this is a really nice resource to have if you do have to take that step. If you need help filling out the FAFSA form, there are many help options on their website. They also have a FAFSA help page and a frequently asked questions section. If you select the contact us option, you will have the option of emailing them or chatting with someone live. If you chat with someone live, they offer support in both English and Spanish. If you do choose to go to their website, I will show you the sections that will be most helpful. Most of you will go to the Understanding Aid section. And this will tell you the different types of aid and how it works. You can also click up here on the Help Center link. And this will give you the frequently asked questions. Right here on the side are the top 10 most asked questions. You can also browse by topic. So you can ask a question here or you can click on one of these subjects down here to see what the frequently asked questions are. If you wanted to chat live with a representative, all you have to do is click this contact us link here. You will type in your question and then you will select find contact center. If you need more help, you can contact the financial aid office at the college that you plan to attend. And finally, FAFSA also has a YouTube channel called Federal Student Aid that may help as well. And let me show you what the YouTube channel looks like real quick. So we will go to YouTube and search Federal Student Aid. And this right here is what their YouTube account looks like. If you go to their videos, you can see everything that they've uploaded. And this includes a lot of different scenarios, such as how to create your FAFSA ID, what happens if you forget your username, your student loan repayment options, 
And then they have a lot of other helpful videos from professionals on how to keep track of your balance, how to pay it back, what a work study is, and other things like that. There are also a ton of articles detailing the FAFSA process if you are interested. All you have to do is simply Google FAFSA or how to fill out a FAFSA to get more information.